Hey everybody and welcome to Smith Rock in Central Oregon. This is a special place. Do you know about it? It's known among rock climbers for sure. And the secret is getting out about this place from other areas as well. We're going to ask some pretty basic questions this morning, trying to decide what kind of rock we have here, what kind of geologic story we can tell from Smith Rock in Central Oregon. a tree. These are trees. <laughs> oh, I'm so one-dimensional. We got out here early to beat the heat. Glad we did. So you may be a fan of hiking in the desert southwest, down in southern Utah, for instance. And there's a bunch of canyons like this, and there's a bunch of pink rock like this, and maybe to some of you it looks very similar, but it's not. Totally different geologic story here. Unlike southern Utah, these pink cliffs are made out of volcanic rock called rhyolite and to convey the scale and the drama here is a difficult chore so it's one thing just to go oh yeah okay it's lava rock just like uh, the Cascades you know but that's not the story here this is not a Cascade story this is a completely different kind of volcano with a different system Not flipping you off. Something happened here. Something big. All right, so we got some pretty good light here. It comes and goes, but I, I think this might work. You can see all these angular blocks of things that got involved in this supervolcano explosion. 
Notice that many of them are angular. Some of them are rhyolite. In other words, they're part of the actual volcanic blast, the, the ignimbrite, the ash flow tuff, just like you would have in Yellowstone. But look at this guy. That's about as limestoney as limestone gets. Kind of an elephant skinny kind of gray thing. And where do you find that kind of limestone? Well, you see it stretched across an area uh, where there was uh, warm, shallow seas. And to have that block of limestone, and it's not just one, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of little limestone blocks. What's this? Can't really tell. I'm in a state park. I don't have my hammer, but uh, this looks uh, possibly rhyolitic, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I'm going to come back to this one. I like this little guy. I'm going to have a seat. Ugh! Yeah, that's a great example of Paleozoic warm shallow sea limestone that was just innocently here for hundreds of millions of years until we have this super volcano explosion that just blew up the crust and created this super volcano plume, changed global climate certainly. So it's a big super volcano event. And I think the best way to get a feeling for how much energy we're talking about is to realize we have a Paleozoic limestone angular clast uh, within this thousand feet or more of ash flow tuff from the Crooked River Caldera event, 29.5 million years old. Let me say it a different way. We had a super volcano explosion 29.5 million years ago in Northern California. You're looking at the deposits from it. And yet this Paleozoic limestone, I'm gonna guess it's more than 300, maybe more than 400 million years old was involved in this blast. Pan to the roof of the world. Hey, Gizmo. Pan. The H. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh.
So here's my point exactly. Scrambled up to this little pass. Too steep for me to get up and over. But if we're looking west as we are right now, can I zoom any more for you? You can see the three sisters, stratovolcanoes. You can see, I think that's Three Fingered Jack. He's barely picking up things on the horizon, right? That's the Cascades. You're looking west to stratovolcanoes of the Cascades. And yet for more than 100 years, geologists over here, just to the east of those stratovolcanoes, looking at Smith Rock, this rock, assume that there must be some kind of rhyolite history with the Cascades. Let me step back for just a second. Hang on. Concentrate. I want to keep this rolling though. <clears throat> Thank you. So the, I'm going to zoom back out. So what do you do as a field geologist 100 years ago, even 50 years ago, with all this volcanic rhyolite so close to the Cascades. Don't you lump it in? The age is 29.5 million. Okay, well the Cascades have been here for 40. But the new work indicates that there's geochemical signatures here in this rhyolite of Smith Rock that have signatures of a supervolcano event tied to the Yellowstone hotspot and not tied to the Cascade subduction story. One of the main messages, yes, this is volcanic, Smith Rock, but no, this is not related to the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate or the Farallon plate or the Kula plate. Instead, this is a mantle plume coming up through North America and creating a supervolcano event. And just looking through the viewfinder here, I hope you can see we have more beautiful angular blocks that were involved in this supervolcanic blast. Boy, what a special place. And if you're worried about me, I will have no problem getting down. There's a nice little trail going all the way up here. Fred Astaire on the rocks. Oh, I don't think Fred Astaire weighed 280. God, did he just say 280?
Well, it's, uh, it's maybe tough to do without a map, but let me try anyway. Okay. Uh, Mantle Plume, or hot spot, uh, beneath Yellowstone Park in Wyoming. We good? Okay. We know that that mantle plume is essentially fixed. It's stationary. And North America has been drifting to the southwest over that stationary hotspot for at least 17 million years. And so if we go back 17 million years ago, that means that mantle plume was in northern Nevada instead of uh, northwestern Wyoming. Still with me? Well, there's some not all, some geologists, especially some Oregon geologists, who now see that you can take that Yellowstone mantle plume back much further in time than 17. You can go all the way back to 56 million years ago and have that Yellowstone mantle plume offshore of Northern California, building uh, a large igneous province out in the Pacific Ocean called Celestia. The reason that has something to do with this little episode on Smith Rock, by the way, we continue to have nice views. I'm about out of battery. I, I keep filming so much. <laughs> um, nice shot of the river as well. The reason that that's worth mentioning here in this episode in Smith Rock is because if you visualize a relatively straight line between Yellowstone Park and let's say Cape Mendocino, Northern California coast, okay? And if we imagine that North America has been drifting over that stationary Yellowstone hotspot, we should originally have a relatively straight line of calderas. One big explosion after another, super volcanic explosions making calderas. We should have a line of those calderas uh, stretching from Wyoming and the Rocky Mountains all the way to the California coast and then eventually offshore we don't have a caldera because we're melting ocean crust and instead we're making a large igneous province. The only wrinkle in that is that central Oregon where I am right now is not on that line and yet I am saying that there is a Yellowstone hotspot signature here. So the last little twist and it literally is a twist, a clockwise rotation, is to take that lineup of uh, progressively older calderas as you go southwest through Northern California. I know this sounds confusing, but maybe you can uh, focus. And take those calderas that were originally in Northern California and slowly start moving them north. Not when they're hot. I mean, it's long after they were formed. But due to clockwise rotation of the crust, you'll have to refer to other programs to know what that really is all about. We're going to take these calderas in Northern California, cross the border, bring them into Oregon, and depending on which caldera and which place you are in Oregon, you can find scattered supervolcano calderas tied to the Yellowstone system, but they're not lined up anymore because of the clockwise rotation. Clear as mud? Hey, I tried. I gave it the old college try. Very nice.
So you had no trouble with that little pass today, Corey? Yeah, fine. Good. I should have gone directly through the first time. It was just I like, couldn't see the hole. There's like this under thing that like is only good when you're at a certain height. Yep. Do you want to find one now? Yeah. Okay. I'll just creep. I'll put up the one that goes to the left of your right. Do you still
Well, that's probably plenty for today, don't you think? I appreciate you joining us. Very difficult for us to visualize a supervolcano, isn't it? Yes, this is a yapping dog behind me, and that's also a very small portion of a supervolcano caldera that's 30 miles across and circular. Very difficult to convey that to a public with just words. But at least we had some pretty pictures and maybe a new tidbit or two intellectually. Thanks for joining us. I love you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.